Okay, in part one, we got VTP to work on two switches, and we set up a VTP server and a VTP client, and we created the VTP domain, domain one, and these are the commands that I used. We used a show VTP status, show VLAN. We created a number of VLANs, and these are just some of the VLANs we created. And then we um, created the port here, turned the port into a trunk, right? And we allowed all the VLANs. The other port auto-negotiated to a trunk because of DTP and the fact that it's in dynamic auto mode. So we, we achieved a trunk here. And then we did these commands, uh, VTP domain one, and then um, VTP mode, the default mode is server. So we didn't really have to do it, but it, the default is in VTP mode server. And so we created a VTP server. Then we created a VTP client and then the client, once we gave it the VTP domain name, right, which is the command right here, it learned all about all of the VLANs from the VTP server. So with the VTP server, we can add uh, VLANs, we can create VLANs, we can delete VLANs, and then the client will learn about that from the server. Now what we want to do is we want to go and talk about transparent mode. So we've got server mode, client mode VTP and now we want to do transparent mode. Now transparent mode what will happen is a switch that is put into VTP transparent mode will pass VTP um, advertisements and VTP control messages VTP messages it will pass them on the network but it will not participate really in the VTP domain by adopting the VLANs. It will not learn VLAN 11, 22, and 33. It will main, maintain its own separate VLAN configurations, right? But it will forward on uh, VTP protocol messaging. Okay, so let's set one up. So we'll go to switches and we'll take out a 2960 switch and this switch is going to be our VTP transparent switch. Okay, so there it is right we'll open it up and go to CLI enable conf T interface we'll go to its first Ethernet interface right and what we'll do is we'll turn it into a trunk and then allow all of the VLANs Okay, so we've just set the port on this switch to be a trunk so that when we hook it up to port 2 over here, it'll auto-negotiate to being a trunk. So we'll do that in a minute. Next thing we're going to do is we'll do a control C, conf T to get to global config mode. And what we'll do now is we'll say VTP, let's see, mode, we'll do a question mark, yeah, mode tr tab transparent so this will be in transparent mode right and then what we'll do is we'll say vtp domain domain one which is the domain that the other switches are on okay i stepped away for a moment i'm in switch two here which is not connected yet to the vtp domain but we have configured it for it so let's just take a quick peek at the configuration before we plug it in. So we'll say enable show VLAN and you'll see that it just has the default VLANs, right? It's got VLAN 1, 1002, 1003, 1004, and 1005. Those five VLANs are the default VLANs. Okay, and if we do a show VTP status, okay, it's using VTP version 2 it's on configuration revision zero so it has no revisions yet um, and it's got the five default VLANs the number of existing VLANs notice it's in transparent mode which is what we wanted and the domain name is domain name one so what we'll do now is we'll just plug it in so we'll take a crossover cable we'll go from port one here to port two here okay and once it is up and running, it is actually, since it's in transparent mode, it's not going to learn 
of the VLANs, all right? So that that is, is we're not going to see much of a change here because in transparent mode, this switch is not supposed to adopt the VLANs. What we want to see is whether it will um, pass on VLAN information to the next switch. So we get the next switch. We'll say here's another 2960 switch, and we're going to get this switch right here, right? And we're going to make this switch a VTP client. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other one. Notice I'm not connecting it yet. What I'll do is I'll open up the switch, um, command line interface. I'll go enable conf t to get to global config mode. Then I'm going to do interface fa0 slash 1, switch port mode trunk. Okay, then switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1 through 99 okay so we just set up the trunk port right then what we're going to do is do a control C and then a conf T and now we'll say VTP mode client so it's in client mode then we'll say VTP domain we'll say domain 1 which is the name of the VTP domain right then we'll do a quick look show VLAN you'll see it doesn't have any VLANs right just the default ones right nothing else and we'll see show VTP status and you'll see that it's just in client mode it's got the domain name it only has the five uh, default VLANs right and now what we'll do is We'll plug it in and we'll see if it learns about the other VLANs because the server disseminating to the client, disseminating to the transparent mode server, and then the transparent mode server passing it on to this client. So we'll say crossover cable from port 1 to port 2 over here. The trunk will be auto negotiated because this port is in trunk mode. This is in dynamic auto. So the trunk will be negotiated, right? And then to speed up the process, VTP advertisements from the server happen every five minutes. But we can speed up the process by adding a VLAN to the server. So what we'll do is we'll open up the server, right? There's the server. And what we'll do is we'll say enable, show VLAN. And you see we've got 11, 22, 33, 44, 77. Let's add VLAN 55. So we'll do conf T. And we'll do VLAN 55. That added a VLAN, right? And now that will force an update to hit this client, which will hit this transparent server, which will hopefully, and this client will be updated. So now we go into the client and we say show VTP status. You can see it now knows 11 VLANs. The configuration revision number has jumped up to two, right? And if we do a show VLAN, it now knows about all the VLANs, right? So switch 3 has learned about all the VLANs. This client, this VTP client, learned about all the VLANs from the transparent mode switch. Now the transparent mode switch should maintain its own VLAN database and not adopt the VLANs. So if we do a show VLAN, you'll see that it does not have the VLANs. It is just passing on the information, right? It has its own VLAN configuration. It's not participating and learning the VLANs. It's just passing the information on, right? So then we see the purpose of a transparent mode switch to maintain its own separate VLANs, but pass on the VLAN information to these other clients.